Welcome to the Ars Martin Show. We are in for an absolute treat this evening as I'm going to be joined by England and Aston Villa, Villa goalkeeper Tom Heaton. It's going to be an absolute pleasure to have Tom join us shortly. Like I say in, in all the shows that have gone by, this is more than just a product show. We are going to be talking to some of the biggest names in the game and this week is going to top pretty much anything we've done so far. We want to share with you information from the biggest names in the game and that is exactly what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to try and get you guys involved a little bit as well. I've prep some questions for Tom so that will be uh, be the, the majority of the show is, is what I've prepped for him. But before we interview Tom and, and chat to him because he's just joined AB1GK, he's going to be a brand new endorsee for the AB1 brand. But before we get talking with Tom and talking goalkeeping gloves, we're going to have a little recap of what's happened with the AB1 endorsees this weekend. It's been a, a, another really busy weekend. Asmir Begovic in action for Bournemouth. He kept a clean sheet and had a man of the match display on Saturday against QPR. QPR. He secured the point for them. He made some massive saves. Bournemouth are still unbeaten this season and they are sitting third in the championships with 11 points. Wickham Wanderers and Ryan Allsop are still awaiting their first points of the season. This weekend, Millwall came to town and Wanderers had the upper hand for the first half. Scott Cowshett scored in the ninth minute. However, a soft penalty gave the Londoners the chance to equalise at the start of the second half, while Ryan Leonard hit a nice volley for a 2-1 Millwall win. Max O'Leary and Bristol City are still top of the championship after this weekend's draw at Barnsley. In America, Bobby Edwards made his MLS debut last week, starting in a massive gain in a 2-1 win over Columbus Crew on Thursday. He was between the sticks again last night at DC United, where they lost, unfortunately. We witnessed goals galore in the Scottish Premiership, where Ryan Fulton's Hamilton lost to St Johnson 5-3. Marco Johansson and Malmo FF played this evening in Stockholm, where the league leaders visit the current champions of Sweden, or Garden IF. On the other side of the Swedish capital, Budimir Johansovic was in action again with another win and another clean sheet. They beat IFK Gothenburg 2-0. Serie A is in full swing. Dele Albora was starting for Victus in Elaris and it was a 1-1 draw there for him. Um, the second half, they were down to 10 men. Blackpool captured an important point at Crew Alexander with Chris Maxwell between the sticks and he was once again with the captain's armband. So it was a busy weekend for the AB1 indoorsies around the world. Great to uh, see everyone back in action after the international break. Just before Tom joins us, I just want to uh, touch upon a, um, some products that have arrived with us that are now back in stock. The Impact Uno will be back in stock in every size later on this evening. Stock has arrived today and the Undici Nero is back in stock as well. All sizes will be back and available on the AB1 GK website this evening. So if you're looking out for those guys, as many of you are, they're back in stock. So tune in and, uh, and grab those later on. Right, I'm pretty nervous about doing this. It's not every day you get to speak to England internationals. And I'm absolutely delighted to be joined this evening by our brand new endorsee for AB1 GK. Tom Heaton, welcome. Can you hear me, Tom? Martin, how you doing? How you doing, Tom? You all right? I'm very yeah, well, thank very... you. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Very well. You've, you've joined AB1 um, in the last few days. We're absolutely delighted to have you on board. Why have you chosen AB1 GK to be your glove supplier going forward, Tom? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, um, obviously, I've known Asmir for a long time. Um, I know the background for the company. You know, the insight that he's put in and other goalkeepers have put into it. Um, I think that plays a big part. I think the priority for me is the gloves. I think the, uh, you know, the product is fantastic. You know, the output I'm getting when I've tried them has been, has been great. You know, that, that's the priority, of course, for me. Um, and yeah, I just think that 
you know, the opportunity to have a li- add my little bit of goalkeeping insight into the brand, into the concepts, into the design, um, you know, and where it's come from, sort of based by goalkeepers, the insight that Asmir has put in and hopefully I can put in and amongst others in the future. I just really like where it's going. I'm really excited for it. So I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to be on board. Because you could have chosen so many brands, one of the biggest names in goalkeeping. So you could, you would have had a every brand at your doorstep, and you've chosen AB One. So it says a lot about the AB One GK brand for you to to come on board. Which glove model are you going to wear, Tom? What, what's your your glove choice going to be going forward? Yeah, it's a, the traditionalist that I am. Um, the glove of choice for me will be the uh, the Uno Classic roll. Um, you know, for me, I've worn a, I've worn a roll finger for the last few years. Really liked it. Really liked the fit of the Uno. So uh, that'll be my glove moving forward. That's awesome. Importance of goalkeeper gloves for you. Is it a really important part for you as a a goalkeeper, your gloves? Yeah, it is. It's massive. You know, I think think with that, you're you're in trouble. You've got to have 100% trust in your glove. Um, You've got to be able to rely on it, whatever's going on. You know, whatever the weather is, whatever, you know, the conditions, the state of the game, it's so, so important to uh, to have that reliability for me. The reliability and the quality, I think I think you just can't get away from it. Um, and as I say, I've been I've been so impressed with the uh, with the UNO so far. Um, I'm getting closer to fitness now and I'm really looking forward to uh, to wearing him in, in uh, competitive action. That's awesome. We can't wait to see you back in action. We'll, we'll talk about your um, your injury and your comeback shortly. While we're talking about gloves, um, could you talk to us about any glove care routines that you may have as a as a professional goalkeeper? So, some top tips for some of the young lads that tune in on a weekly basis here. What top tips would you give in, in, in a routine that you may have, Tom? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is the attention to detail and then for that, I'm talking about cleaning your gloves. You know, I've always been big on, you know, whether I'm training them, playing them, after I've used them, clean them, hanging them up to dry, get them fully dry for, for uh, the next time you're going to use them. That, that's, that's always been my, uh, my view. Um, in terms of my match day routine, I will wear a pair of gloves in for a short training session. If I can't get it in a short training session, I'll actually change them. You know, I'll wear them for 20 minutes of a session and then, and then put an older pair on. After I've worn them in for that, short session I'll, I'll I'll wash them um, usually days before a game dry them dry them at home so no one can interfere with them at the training ground which has always been a bit of a problem um, and then I'll, uh, I'll I'll use them for the game yeah. again wash them dry them use them for another game and then that'll become a training glove and, and, the, and the cycle goes on really um, that's how I've, how I've worked it in the last sort of 10 years I'll tend to wear a glove for two matches and it becomes a training glove and, and consistently uh, do that Really good, really good tips coming in. There's so many young goalkeepers tuning in. Tom, we've got record numbers on the show tonight. I've not seen this amount of people join us. So this is awesome. Um, it's great to have you here and you sharing these top tips with our, with our young goalkeepers. It's invaluable. Tom, we spoke about gloves. I want to talk a, a bit about your career now, if that's OK. Um, you're one of the biggest clubs in the world in, in Manchester United. and You took a massive decision to progress your career and maybe take a step back and, 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 and drop a level. But how was that, that making that decision being at United and, and moving on, Tom? Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd been at United for a long time. I, it was obviously fantastic for me to have a foundation for my career, um, a real good apprenticeship. I learned an awful lot. I learned how the best do it. I learned how the best win. Um, but for me, the, the drive and the desire was always to play, you know, it was to play games. It was to go and earn my own career. I wanted to be on the pitch rather than watching from the sidelines, even though I was in amongst it in the dressing room and, and, and you know, 20, 25 times on the bench for the first team. For me, it was, I wanted to be out there on the pitch and, and I knew it was the right time to leave. I knew it was the right decision to go. Yes, there was an element of risk, but it's not about being safe all the time. You know, I, I, I never wavered from it feeling like the right decision for me. Um, and, I, and I've stuck by that principle throughout my career uh, that, that playing is what I'm, what I'm chasing really, the, you know, and, and, and I'm pleased I've done that. I've, I've, been, I've enjoyed that journey so far um, and I wouldn't change it for the world. You told me about your time at United. You said you played with some of the biggest names in the game. What was it like being around someone like Edwin van der Sar? 
yeah, in, inspiring. You know, he was he was a fantastic character first and foremost. He was brilliant with me. I learned so much from him. You know, being such a young goalkeeper there. Um, you know, I, I still keep in touch with him every now and then. I, I spoke to him a couple of months ago. Um, yeah, he, he was brilliant. You know, I, I was so impressed with him day to day, how he went about his business, his training, match day playing, so calm and composed. And, and he spread that amongst the team. Um, and it's something that I've tried to add into my game. Um, but just the impact that he had on other players, as well as the quality that he had, you know, the big saves that he made at big moments, which was which was probably his biggest his biggest asset for me, you know, be quiet for 89 minutes and at that one moment when he was needed, he produced something special. Um, so, yeah, but as well as that, I think the big thing for me was how he, how he influenced other people around him. He got what he needed to get in terms of the coaching staff. Mm. He got what he needed to get from, from defenders on the pitch, position that he needed them to take, blocking certain sides of the goals at certain moments. The level of detail that he went into was... was yeah, inspiring. And I think um, I've, tried to, I've tried to take that with me over the years. Yeah, it's amazing that you kept in touch with him as well. Do you, do you have like a mentor, Tom? Is there anyone that you kind of, you work with a, a fair bit other than your goalkeeping coach? Yes, I think, um, I think I've, had a, I've been fortunate to have a, a good support system. Um, a very, very close relationship with my dad. Um, so he and, I, he and I have been close all the way through. A bit of a sounding board for me. Some, some incredible advice all the way through uh, and consistent advice, which is also important. He's probably the closest to it. My wife, who I've been with for a long time, um, less on the detailed football matters, I think it'd be fair to say. But, you know, in, in terms of the uh, yes. just the general feel of how things are going, she, she's been great. Um, and in football, I've got, I've got numerous people, actually, a, a, a really good support network. You've obviously got your goalkeeper coach. My current goalkeeper coach, Neil Cutler, is fantastic. Previous goalkeeper coaches that I've worked with. Um, and, and, and players as well, you know, I think. You know, players who, who you have a bond with and you have a, have a relationship with um, become p- part of that network. And I think, uh, I think I've been fortunate to, to have uh, a real strong bond with a lot of players that I've, uh, I've played with. Tom, you, um, you went on and you, you had an incredible time at, at Burnley. Can, can we just touch upon your, your time there at the club? I know we have loads of the our fans are joining us right now. Um, it was six incredible years you had. What was the standout moment at the club for you, Tom? I know there was many, but... Is there anything that particularly stands out? Yeah, tough one, actually. I think, um, you know, being promoted, I'm going to have to give you a few of that. Standout, I'll come to the standout moment. I think, you know, getting promoted to the Premier League was, was, a, was a massive moment, especially when we were favourites to get relegated that season out of the Championship. I think my first ever Premier League game, starting the Premier League against Chelsea on the Friday night, was, was incredible. Um, you know, captain in the football club, you know, I, I was honoured to take that take that mantle. I think, uh, you know, retaining uh, retaining Premier League status later on, winning the championship when after the year after we got relegated. Um, you know, all all brilliant moments. I have to say, you know, incredible time there. I think in terms of games and moments, probably probably the Man United game at Old Trafford where we we got a nil nil, um, keeping a clean sheet at Old Trafford. You know, had a few saves that day. So I think that that especially having spent such a long time at you were incredible at United, that day. I don't know very well. Yeah, it was it was a decent day out, I think, and especially having spent so, such a long time there. Um, you know, the, the the Ibrahimovic save obviously stands out in my mind as a as a big moment. So yeah, that, that's probably uh, that's probably right up there, I'd say. Yeah, I remember seeing it on match of the day that evening, and they absolutely raved about your performance that day. And that save is still on YouTube everywhere now. As I did my research earlier on last week, and it kept on popping up that save. Incredible, incredible moment. Um, fond memories at, at Burnley. Um, how was it moving on from there, going on to, to in such a great club in Aston Villa? A, a big move. How, how was it leaving? Yeah, it was okay. You know, I think it, it was, you know, I haven't had such a good time there. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in, you know, you know when it's the right time. I felt it was the right time. And I was, I was really excited to, to, join, to join Aston Villa. Um, and obviously, up until the injury, and even even since the injury, I've got to say, it, absolutely brilliant. I, you know what a football club, what a place it's been. It, it was a, I really really enjoyed the the first twenty Premier League games that I played. Just so disappointed to to pick up the injury, but that's part and parcel of it. You know, it was a it was an awkward landing. Um, 
with a with a with quite serious consequences. Obviously, with the uh, rupture in the anterior cruciate ligament, but that's part and parcel yeah. of football. It's part and parcel of life. You've got to roll with it a little bit. The medical staff at the club have been brilliant. I'm uh, I'm really pleased that I'm getting a lot closer to to um, being fully fit. You know, I've been back out on the grass for quite a while now. It's it's about a gradual mm. process of building it up. I'm starting to feel sharp. I'm starting to feel at it. You know, I'm delighted that the lads have, have started so well. And as I say, I'm really, really excited to get back in amongst it um, and start fighting for the shirt. You know, that, that's that's where I'm at. I think yeah. I'm out and massive appetite to get back in uh, and get back out there. You know, as I say, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly love representing the football club for those first 20 games. And yeah, I've got a, a real, real uh, hunger to get back there and, and, pull, that, and pull that jersey on. And, and that's my aim. They've had an incredible start, sitting second in the Premier League at the moment as well. It's been in, and the the win over Liverpool was huge. That the atmosphere around that football club at the moment must be brilliant, Tom. Yeah, it is. I think I think obviously it's. Um, I think one of the things that stood out for me uh, first, when I first signed was was the atmosphere at Villa Park um, and the support away from home. Actually, I've got to say, you know, incredible noise. Obviously, I mentioned my dad already. I think the first win we had uh, under the lights at Everton at the start of last season, um, he said it's the best atmosphere he's ever he's ever watched me, and he's been to pretty much every game I've ever played in. Wow. And I'd agree, you could feel that. So the only slight, the only slight sort of downside is the fact that the fans haven't been there to sort of see the uh, to see the start firsthand. Um, but that aside, it's been it's been an incredible start to the season. Um, I think as you look at it, the, the performances and the, the results have warranted have been warranted with the performances. You know, we've added some real quality into the squad. Um, you know, Emmy, Emmy, of course, in, in that list, he's been outstanding first part of the season. Um, and we look, yeah, we look, we look really, really good at the moment. We've got that balance between attack and defence. You know, we have, we have moments where we're defending well, um, soaking up a bit of pressure, and we we look really, really dangerous going forward. So we've got that balance bang on at the moment. Um, as I say, long may it continue. And you, you can just feel it. You can feel it in the football club. And that, that's why I'm so excited to, to get back in amongst it. Uh, you can just feel the momentum, the shift. You know, there's a real belief. There's an energy um, with everyone, with everyone, the coaches, the manager, the, the players. Um, I'm, I'm assuming the fans, I haven't come across too many of them because obviously there are COVID restrictions and that, but I'm, I'm assuming they're feeling it too. So yeah, it's really, really exciting times at Aston Villa. And as I say, I'm... Uh, I'm desperate to get to get back out there in amongst it, and that's that, that's where my my sole focus is at the moment. And training's going well, Tom. For you at the moment, you 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 really have going well, and you're you're, you're nearing match fitness. Yeah, I I, I am. You know, it's uh, of course it's a serious injury, um, serious operation. You can't afford to cut corners with it. Um, so I've, I've built I've built in gradually. You know, I, I was. Did a little bit of training out on the grass and slowly built it up at the start of pre-season. That's then kicked up a few gears at about three or four weeks ago. Um, I've been backing amongst the goalkeeping group uh, for the last sort of week, 10 days. Um, I'm probably looking at another week or so with, with just the goalkeepers. Um, and starting Monday, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to transitioning in with the outfielders. I keep, I keep getting a cheer across the pitch from the boys and I'll be looking forward <laughs> to joining with them. Um, joining in with them hopefully from, from Monday onwards but yeah as I say it is a gradual process you can't rush these things the good news yeah. is I feel I feel great you know that all over I feel great in terms of my body and what have you I feel sharp that sharpness has been building I now feel ready so I'm uh, I'm really really looking forward to uh, to yeah getting back into training with the lads and, and, and taking it from there but I'll be uh, I'll be pushing as hard as I can as quickly as I can oh, Awesome Tom as you head towards the games, I watched a really interesting interview a few days ago and you spoke a lot about pre-match preparation and mental preparation for games. Could There's a lot of young goalkeepers tuned in here that are playing all over the country, all over the world and everybody's looking for, for ways to improve their game and I know you put a lot in before matches. Could you just talk to the guys through what you do as pre-match preparation, Tom? Yeah, I can. I think, um, you know, I think I've uh, I've always been a big advocate of uh, of the mental side of the game. It's massive for a goalkeeper, you know. I think uh, you know physically and technically you can work on that, but the psychological side of it is is mega. And I think I found that early in my career. I went away and did quite a lot of work on it. Um, and I'd now probably say it's the, it's the probably the strongest part of my game. Really, that 
the ability to perform um, when required. Uh, mm. So, in terms of a, a pre-match a pre-match ritual, um, I have a I have a, a, a routine that I go through, um, and I try and repeat it, and I, and I repeat it in terms of it starts the day before for me uh, in terms of eating. I always try and I've found out what my optimum sleep is, what makes me feel the great, what makes me feel the best. So I aim for I aim for that nine and a half hour sleep night before a game. Again, food on the day of a game, I, I try and keep very similar. Sounds boring, but I always try and keep it um, keep it the same. And and um, mm. re- the repetition for me brings brings the same um, feel every week. So I, I spend you know about four or five hours before kickoff. I spend a, a bit of time, a little bit of visualization, um, a little bit of thinking how the game's going to go. A um, little bit going back over over previous games, previous big moments for me. And it just gets me into that uh, performance zone, really. And I think it's been so it's been so effective for me. I've got to be honest, I've, I've really bought into it, as I said, 10, 12, uh, and I've done it before every single game I've played for the last 10 or 12 years. And I would, I would never move away from it. Um, I, 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 I've never been a big believer. And one of the things I learned at Man United was you know, big games, you know, it's other people that talk about big games. Every game's a big game for me. So the, the, the preparation never changes, whether it's a pre-season friendly or whether it's the World Cup final. Um, it, it would never change. Um, and I think that's something that I got into where it's a, a real rhythm of what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to do. And you're just trying to perform and give yourself the best chance to perform. So for me, that, that, that's, the, uh, that's the message, is the consistency of preparation um, provides, provides consistent performance and, and whether it's a big game, semi-final, final, it shouldn't really matter. It should be the same all the way through. And, and that way you're not trying to turn it off and on. It's just there all the time. That is an awesome top tip for any goalkeeper, any level, isn't it? Yeah, well, it works for me. You know, I, I, it's, um, that's, been, that's been key. I mean, we're all different at the end of the day. You know, I've played with a lot yeah. of different goalkeepers. Um, I think you've got to know yourself and know what works for you. Uh, I think you can only really do that through trial and error. Um, but that's my way, so it might work for some, it might not work for others. No, it's really, really interesting. Um, awesome, awesome. Before you go, I want to sort of t- touch upon your, your England career. Um, everybody everybody talks about it, the pinnacle of, of, any old, of any player's career. What was it like that first time you got called up for, for the Nationals? I know you played through many, many levels sort of as a junior coming through under 21s. But to get that national team call up, what was that like, Tom? Yeah, incredible. You know, you've, you've just said it there. I think, um, I think as you look at it, um, you know, as the, it, it, representing your country, it's an incredible moment. You know, to to get the call, um, you know, filled with excitement. Um, of course, that natural human sort of anxiety and and, and edginess, uh, but uh, you know, massive excitement and a real proud moment for the journey. You know, the journey started as a sort of nine-year-old. Um, and I think I was 28, 29, 29, I think when I when I got my first call up to the England squad. So yeah, it's been it been a hell of a journey. 20 years, um, you know, never Amazing. never stopped working. Yeah, never stopped believing in, in in myself to try and get there, even when it felt a long way away from other people looking out. Um, so yeah, yeah, incredible incredible moment. Yeah. No, I and mean, get back in the Villa side, so get playing again, and 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 get back into the in the England squad. Is is that something where you want to be again? That's what you're aiming for. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, you know, I've 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 tried to sort of uh, rein those sort of thinkings in, that sort of thought process in. Um, you know, based on the fact that the, the the priority in terms of my focus has been getting getting my knee right, getting my body in in, in shape um, to come back better than before. You know, that was that was when I when I first did it that first week, I sat down. And and you know, made sure that I was willing to put it in. Um, a, to get get my body right in terms of my knee, but also to come back in in better shape and being be better than than I was first time round. I think um, I think um, you know football football evolves, football gets better season on season. You have to you have to move with the times, um, and I want to be ahead of that ahead of that curve. Uh, that was the, that was what I've tried to do. So over the over the last nine months, um, I think it's been just over nine months, nine months and a week since I had my operation, nine months and two weeks since I did the injury. Um, wow. You know, I've put I've tried to put the hard yards in, um, but yeah, now now as I say, I'm getting back to a decent level of sharpness. Um, still a little bit to go, but it's coming. Um, yeah, the, the the ambition is to to get into back into that exciting team, the really exciting team, and then and then push on for international. I can't I can't 
lie. That's that's certainly where I'm where I'm aiming. Tom, it's so exciting. We just can't wait to see you back on the field now. You've put so much hard work in by the sounds of it, and we wish you all all the best for the season ahead, Tom. Um, Villa are absolutely flying. Last question before you go. Um, is there any... Oh, there's so many goalkeepers tuning into this show and they're always asking for, for their top tip to make it as a professional goalkeeper. I think you've touched upon a lot of it during our chat. It's hard work and dedication. What's the one standout thing you need as a, as a, to, to make it in a professional game, to, to get to the very, very top end? Um, yeah, it's a good question. I think... I think starting out as a as a young goalkeeper um, or a young a young player, I, I would I would be less concerned with the short term. Um, you know, everyone's always always sort of really looking. You know, what's going on right at this moment? Are I in the team? Am I not in the team? He likes me, doesn't like me. Um, but for me, I would I would I would try and always think a little bit broader than that and go, this is where I want to get to. This is where I'm at look like and you've got to you've got to constantly be developing you've got to be constantly improving all the time um you know anyone who, who stops getting better i think falls out of the game you know and falls out falls out from it you've got to constantly keep improving keep adding things in so yeah i think my to summarize i think my message would be th think long term about where you want to get to and what you've got to do to get to that point um you know, you, you've got to get better all the time. You've got to be better than other people. Um, but that challenge is with yourself, really, to maximise everything you've got. Um, I'm rambling a bit, but you see the, you can see the message. Yeah. It's a long road, isn't it? It is. You know, and everyone's got their own journey. You know, some people, some people make the first team debuts at 17. Some people play for England at 18, 19. Um, some people play for England at 32. You know, it's, it, it's, yeah. it takes all different different ways, you know. Um, there's different ways into the game. There's different ways that people get those get to the professional game. You know, you just got to you've just got to trust in the process, um, believe in what you're doing, and, and, and you've just got to constantly look to to add things in um, and, and keep pushing the boundaries. That 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 for me is a, is a success to give you the best possible chance. Doesn't guarantee anything, but it gives you it gives you the best chance of uh, of getting there. Tom, thank you for joining me this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. It's record numbers for us. We have so many people tuning in and watch this. So a big thank you. Enjoy wearing AB1 gloves. I ho hopefully we'll be able to catch up with you later on in the season and you'll be able to, you know, we'll be able to catch up on how things are going with you and, and, and how the season's rolling. So hopefully you better join me at another stage at some stage. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, I, uh, I look forward to it. Um, I really enjoyed it tonight. So thanks very much. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to the journey as well. Yeah, but best wishes, Tom. Thank you. Thanks very much. Cheers. A massive thank you to Tom Heaton, who has joined us this evening on the show. What a wonderful opportunity for us to learn and gain from one of the biggest names in the game. He's given us some unbelievable insights into what you can do at any level of football. You may be... A grassroots football just making your way, but there's some unbelievable top tips there from, from Tom, who's, who's done it all and played at the highest level possible. So a big thank you to him. Hope you can join me again next week where we've got an awesome product show. We're going to be taking a look at the Undici collection and going into a little bit more depth. We've had a lot of questions come in. The differences between models. I know we've done a lot of individual work on in, on the individual guys, but we're going to do a bit more detail on the differences between models. So next week is going to be all around Andici, and you never know, we may get another endorsee on. Thank you again for tuning in this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs>